and yep. then also I mean, getting Trent back is huge. He's he's really like the battery of our operation, and you know maybe an unknown, underrated position, but until you're in that specialist room, I mean, he's critical. You know, and you can really attribute a lot of Brandon and Brian's success to having the confidence in Trent. And so, you know, as a free agent, I'm not. I'm going to be honest. The first day of free agency, I was nervous that he might go f for whatever reasons. And when we got him back. There was a celebration in the Fossil House. I think it was that Wednesday night, which is the first day of free agency. So it was great to have him back. Absolutely. And then Brandon talking about his first year. You've been around a lot of great specialists, yep. but what has made Brandon so special in his year one? Where do you think he can take it in year two? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I mean, the production obviously was the biggest thing for Brandon. That wasn't surprising because we felt he could be really good but obviously the level of production he had was something you probably couldn't predict but you know for for Brandon to come from out of nowhere and then you know to really survive and thrive in the USFL then to come to us without even like flinching and performing the way he did is just you know a great tribute to his mental toughness really because it's not easy to just jump right in there and start kicking field goals in the National Football League and he did it like he'd done it before, which, which is impressive. Is there a clear line of you know, progression to get to year two, or is it just to stay consistent of where he's at? Yeah, I think you know, the things that we talked about already is the situational type kicks. You know, the after the defensive or special team score, or getting iced, you know, or anything that happens that are kind of unique to the field goal PAT part that isn't just in the normal timing of the play. So. Um, those are things that we took from this past season that we know we can work on. Um, it'll be a little bit unique this year because he's had this whole off season to prepare for an NFL season. Well, last year he went for 12 games USFL in the 21 games NFL. So he kicked 33 games last year. So I think having a good plan of, you know, working into training camp in the regular season is actually going to help, you know, his consistency. I know it might be crazy to say, but I think that'll help him this season. And getting CJ Goodwin back. I know you didn't have him for much of the season last year, yep. but to get him back on the field and back in the locker room, how big is that for your special teams? It's, it's huge. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows what he can do on the field, but nobody except us gets to see him Monday through Saturday. And, you know, that's not enough reason to just have somebody come back. So it's his ability and his production on Sunday that's the most important thing, but you can't deny his impact on the locker room and our special teams room Monday through Saturday. So. You know, we, we, we signed Trent, and the party was off in the Fossil House, and then a few days later we got CJ, and it was equal for sure. <laughs> I want to talk about that amended kickoff rule that you guys are talking about here in Orlando. For the viewers at home, kind of explain the big differences with it and its similarities to the XFL. Yeah, so really I've been looking at this play in the special teams group since 2021 when the XFL kind of first introduced it. Um, I got on a phone call with the guy who created the XFL about, gosh, a couple months ago and asked him, like, how did you do it? Why did you do it? Um, but what it's going to look like, you know, in the hopes that this passes, is the kicker still kicks from the 35-yard line, but we're moving all the kickoff and kickoff return players to the other side of the field, and we're starting them at the yard lines where they would be currently when the ball gets caught in the NFL. So when they're running in the NFL from the 35-yard line to go cover a kick, if you just paused it right when the ball got caught, that's basically where we're going to start all the blockers and tacklers. Now with our proposal, we're going to kick it off from the 35-yard line, and as soon as the ball gets caught by the returner or hits the ground in what we call a landing zone between the goal line and 20, everybody on kickoff and kickoff return starts their play. So it's going to look really unique to the fans before the ball gets kicked because the kicker's here and everybody else is here. But once the ball gets caught, it's going to look very similar to what it looks like now when the ball gets caught. Um, there's some intricate details with penalty enforcements, um, some situational stuff, but the, the nuts and bolts of the play is really very similar to what it is now when the ball's caught. It's just going to look a little different at the start. Yeah, and it seems like a healthy medium towards keeping players healthy, but also keeping the play competitive. That's probably been the, the biggest point of focus around yep. this entire idea, correct? Yeah, that's what it is. We were tasked with, you know, hey, how can we bring live ball returns back into play? but making it safer. And that's a tough task, you know, because if there's more returns, you're just going to assume there's going to be more injuries. But we feel like we've come up with a model where the return rate is going to go significantly up. You know, we're not sure exactly where yet, but 
taking away all the space and speed from the kickoff team, basically eliminating their 30 yards of running start, we feel like it's going to be a much more um, close quarter combat play where you're not going to get the big collisions, which is where some of the injuries happen. So we feel like it's going to be a safer play and a better play because there's going to be more you know, live balls. One question I wanted to ask you about it specifically is uh, on touchbacks, it would be brought to the 30-yard line instead of the 25. Yep. Is there a little bit of strategy there then to make sure it lands within that landing zone yep. rather than just boot it through? Yeah. Brandon Aubrey set the NFL record for touchbacks yeah. last season, so how do you kind of parlay that? Yeah, so that's part of the, the gamesmanship. You know, if you hit a touchback, the ball is at the 30-yard line, but you really don't want to give the opponent the ball at the 30-yard line. So you're incentivized on kickoff to put the ball in the landing zone, go on to 20, and then the kickoff return team has to has to bring the ball out. And so you got to play. That's why the return percentage is going to go up. We've eliminated the fair catch. So there's going to be decisions by the kickoff and kickoff return team. What am I going to do as far as putting the ball in play or not? And then the kickoff return team is going to have some more schematic choices based on how we're starting the playoff than maybe they did before. Um, so it's going to be creative, a lot of gamesmanship, and uh, a little bit experimental schematics through the first half of the season. And we know somebody's going to do something. You're going to be like, oh, my gosh, that was, that was pretty cool. Why haven't we thought of that? And everybody's going to start doing it for the most part. And so hopefully we're the first ones to do it that everybody goes, gosh, we should do that. And last question about the play specifically from a return perspective for Kevontae Turpin, for example. Do you expect things to be much different from a field vision standpoint, or do, do things kind of all crash around the same point that you would expect on a, a, the way the kickoff is now, if that makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I think I see it as a pretty similar play to the way it is now. Because everybody, when Kevonte catches that ball, let's say at the five-yard line, the cover players and the blockers are going to be about where they would be as if the ball got kicked and everybody started from the opposite 35-yard line. So um, we'll take a big look at it through OTAs and training camp. And honestly, we're going to spend more time at it than we did last year, knowing that we could hit some touchbacks and the, the ball is not going to be as live. So this year, the, the time allocation in the kickoff, kickoff return will go up significantly if this thing passes. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be great for the fans. Um, it's actually a very simple concept, which I think everybody will get pretty quickly, and I know the players will love it too. Yeah, last one I got, how confident are you that this is something that will pass tomorrow? Yeah, I'm very hopeful, um, and from the discussions today, there's a lot of optimism around it. Um, the thing that maybe I haven't expressed enough is this is going to be a quality play, and I see this being adopted by college football and high school football in the years to come, and so our responsibility is you know, in the evolution of football, this is just the next step. And how do we make it a better game and a safer game? And I think this is a great step to take. And um, if this thing passes, I think there's a lot of um, benefits to it, not just to the NFL. I guess the only other time that in recent history something like this has been done is a two-point conversion. I mean, would you compare this is a pretty big change in the game yeah. as compared to that two-point conversion when, when the owners did that? Or? Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of benchmarks over the years is a two-point conversion was a big change. I don't think anywhere close to as significant as this. You know, instant replay was a big change, which you could argue is, you know, right there. They moved the goal post from the goal line to the end line. You know, that was, that was a big change. I don't think as significant as this. There was a forward pass that they allowed. I don't know how many years ago that was. Um, that was probably more significant than this. But I think this is up there in the, in the top five of significant changes just to the aesthetics of the start. But the football fans and coaches and players will know once the ball's caught, we're looking at a pretty similar, very sound play. It's going to probably look a lot like an offense or defensive running play. And that's what we project the numbers to be, four to six, six second play. Injury data says it's probably going to match that, which is driving the numbers way down compared to the current kickoff. So a lot of cool stuff that's going to come out of it. And I think there's a big fear of the unknown right now amongst a lot of people talking about this, but I think the excitement of the unknown overrides any fear for me at least because I know this is going to be a great play.